Hello everyone, welcome back to the cookbook journal kit videos. Today we're going to be doing the cover of our journal and uh, this is the very first journal that I made. It is denim covered. It is a soft journal but kind of a hardback journal all in one. <laughs> and we are going to be assembling the cover. Let me just show you this cover. On the front I used one of the pockets and cut it to create two pockets and so just the like of that. I did some sewing on the cover. I used one of the pieces of lace and created a little lacy flower. I included some buttons and we are going to be doing a button closure with elastic to keep our journal closed and so I'm going to show you that. And on the inside we have the gingham paper that is included in your kit and we'll also be doing the metal uh, corner embellishments together as well. I think I will speed this portion of the video up because I have a lot to show you and I want to try and keep this video a little bit shorter for you. Uh, and so we're going to cram a lot of information into uh, a shorter video, I'm hoping. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start with the denim fabric for the cover and the manila file folder. The first thing we want to do is reinforce the spine. I've already scored the file folder for you. And we want to reinforce that spine by just adding some glue. I am using Fabri-Tac glue making sure to cover all of the area. We're just going to glue this reinforcer right to the spine of our book and make sure that it still closes nice and easily. This will reinforce the spine of our book and make it a little bit stronger. We will have a two inch spine on this cookbook. Now we're ready to go ahead and glue our file folder to the fabric. You can see I've given extra if you'd like to fold over the edges and give a nice clean finish to the edge of your book. I'm going to be doing some sewing with my journal. Of course you could just glue everything down and eliminate the sewing if you don't wish to do that. I start by gluing one side down first and making sure to press that and make sure there's no wrinkles in the fabric. And then I will continue gluing the spine and the left side of the book. If you're going to do any sewing, make sure that you wait till your glue is dry before you continue on to the sewing machine. This glue dries very, very quick. And now we're just going to press the file folder all the way down on the fabric and smooth it all out. At this point, I've determined I'm going to do a raw edge on my journal. And so I will cut away all of the extra denim. I'm actually going to save the little tidbits as uh, decorating embellishments in my journal. This file folder, uh, while we're trimming this, we'll go over the measurements. When it was uh, originally the file folder folded in half, from the spine of the folder I cut it 7 inches wide and 9 inches tall and then opened the file folder up just like you see it right here and I scored it in two places starting from the center fold, the original fold on the, on the file folder, score it one inch on the left and the right of the original center fold. And that will give you a book that measures six by nine. The next thing we're gonna do is figure out what kind of embellishments we want on the front cover. And I'm just going to pull a piece of lace, the pocket, 
maybe some papers from the signature kits. I've decided I'm going to cut down my pocket and we will add some lace and I think I'm going to put the smaller portion of the pocket on the front of the cover. I will add a bit of lace to the pocket. This is really the fun part, trying to figure out how you want to do all of your embellishments and decorating, exploring all of the elements inside the kit. So I'm going to let that dry. And I think I've decided I'm going to use the top portion of the denim pocket on the back side of the journal. I'll set that aside for a moment. And now we're just going to play with the layout of the front of the journal. I think I'm deciding that that paper is a little bit too large. <laughs> so I will cut it down and save that piece for something else. I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges of these front papers that I'm adding to the journal cover. I think I will write Bailey's name right in the center of that card. Just continue inking around all of the edges. And I'm going to do some sewing with my uh, embellishments. And so I'm just going to add some glue to that card and paste that down for a minute. And bring everything over to the sewing machine. For this journal kit, I will be using a jeans needle, or you could use the largest size universal needle that you have would work just fine. I'm going to do all of my sewing for my embellishments before they get added to the journal kit. And this is just really as an embellishment. You could glue them and that would work perfectly fine as well. I'm using some pink thread just to add some color and a zigzag stitch and I will stitch around this journaling card or book plate as I'm using it on my journal. Any sewing that you want on the front of your cover that you do not want the stitches to show through to the inside of your book needs to be done at this point in your journal making process. So I'm going to take these two front embellishments and sew them to the front cover of my book. Of course, if you're using the Fabri-Tac glue, that is permanent and would hold this just fine. I like the look and the added security of the stitching. So we have not added the inside covers yet or the inside book page covers or the lining of our book. And I'm just going to sew these embellishments down. Again, I'm still using the pink thread to add some color. I will bring in my pocket next and we will sew down the pocket. I'm still going to use a zigzag stitch to sew down the pocket. I will do some back stitches when I start and when I finish just to lock that in place and make sure that the stitches don't come out. I apologize for the noise in the background. That is my bird. 
who loves to be a part of the videos in his own special little way. And there we go, we've sewn down our front embellishments for our cover. I have finished sewing all of my embellishments that I wanted to hide the stitches with the inside papers. So you can see I have my front pocket and a back pocket. And now we're ready to see all those stitches. Those will be hidden with our inside lining. And at this point we want to go ahead and sew on the button for their front closure so that that is hidden as well. So I'm just going to take a needle that has a large enough eye to thread that DMC thread. And that thread does come with the kit. I just cut off a small piece. And next we're just going to figure out where we want our button closure to go. And starting from the inside, we're going to poke a hole through the front, go through the button, and back to the inside of the journal. And make sure to leave enough thread to tie a knot. And I just tie that into a double knot. And then I'm going to take some masking tape and tape the extra loose thread down. I'm not sure if that's really necessary, but in my mind it's just added security <laughs> that the thread is not going to pull out or go anywhere. I'm just going to trim these extra loose threads up. And there is our front button for the closure. Now we are at the stage where we can go ahead and start adding the lining of our book. I start with the middle piece and I make sure that I glue all over the spine and then inside the little folding places there where I've scored it for you. And beyond that, and we're going to glue down the spine lining. Just give that a really good press into position. And I don't fold anything yet. I just make sure that everything is nice and flat. And then I will add my right side. If you are not doing any sewing on your journal kit, then I suggest you bring the glue all the way to the very edge of the file folder and the paper. I will be taking this back to the sewing machine one last time and doing a zigzag stitch all the way around the corner or, or the outside of my journal. We're just going to press that all down and then we'll do the left side. Again, making sure to cover all of the areas with glue. I am very generous with my glue. <laughs> it does make for a messy crafting session though. We're just going to press this into place and wait for it to dry and bring it to the sewing machine. We are back one last time to do a zigzag stitch all the way around the outside edges of our journal. I'm still using a zigzag stitch and the pink thread and just carefully going along 
the edge all the way around the journal cover. You can use any kind of decorative stitch that you like to do in this process. And I like to do it from the front of the journal so that I can make sure I'm not going over top of any embellishments. This part of the process goes by pretty quickly. Again, it's not totally necessary. It does add some uh, stabilization to the journal cover. And uh, it certainly adds another design element to the journal cover. We have just finished all the stitching around the edges of our journal cover. I'm going to take my fingernail and re-score the inside lining to the score that was on the manila file folder. And gently fold the sides down of the journal cover and that will give us a nice pretty finish on the inside of the journal. And then I'll just take my fingernail and start the fraying process of the denim. Because of the glue that we've used and the uh, stitching, the denim's only going to fray so much. You may have to trim off some of the extra long pieces and it will continue to fray as you use the journal. I personally love that. <laughs> If you have turned the edges over, you will not have to do this part. Now we're going to add the eyelet to the back side of our journal cover. For this, I will be using my crocodile. If you don't have a crocodile, you can use an awl, poke a hole through the back cover, and hot glue your elastic into place. I'm just eyeballing a place and marking the inside cover where I want to poke the hole. Again, you could use your awl and hot glue. I will be using my crocodile on the 1 8 uh, hole punch. This creates a nice clean hole for the eyelet. You may have to trim the denim on the back side because it might create little threads right there that get in the way of the eyelet. And then we will just set the eyelet in place and crimp that into, into position, nice and pretty, again using the 1 8 setting. We will take our piece of elastic and tie a loose knot. We may want to adjust how long the elastic is down the road, so we're just going to make a very simple knot to begin with and thread that through from the inside. And that gives us our journal closure. Now we can begin to add the metal book corners. To do that, I'm just using a small pair of needle nose pliers. I just put that to the corner of the book and fold down one side at a time. This first one, I crimped a little bit too hard and bent the front of my corner. Usually after the first corner is done, you get the hang of how the book corners go on. <laughs> my next three are much more pretty. I'm going to trim a little bit of the extra denim that's hanging over the edge so that that fits more uh, snugly against the edge of the journal. Again, starting on one side, crimping down the sides, and then the next. And we do this for all four corners.
You could add a little bit of glue if you wanted to just really make sure that that's not going to go anywhere. We are on our last one. And usually by now you have perfected adding metal book corners. <laughs> And now we can begin to think about how we want to decorate the outside of our journal, things that we're just going to glue in place. Any stitching that we do on the outside of the journal cover now at this point will show through to the inside of our journal. So I'll just be using um, glue. You could use wet glue like the Fabri-Tac or you could use your hot glue gun. I've decided to add some buttons to the pocket lace and uh, I'm struggling <laughs> to thread this needle. <laughs> this is not my preferred needle of choice to use. Finally, I get it here in just a second. I'm just going to thread these buttons and have a little bit of stringing hanging off the side of the buttons. And that just adds a little bit of decorative elements to the journal cover. Of course, you could just glue any of your buttons down without the thread. On my first journal, I did use the hot glue and that dries very, very quickly. On this journal, I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac glue, which also dries very quick and very clear. It's just not as quick as the hot glue. We're on our last button, and I'm going to put four little dollops of glue along the edge of the lace where I want to add my buttons and then press those down into place. I will figure out a journal card to add to the back pocket and I will pick a tag for the front pocket and that will finish up the decorating of our journal cover. Of course, you can decorate your cover however you wish, even add embellishments uh, or charms or lace things that you might have in your stash. It has been a lot of fun crafting this journal cover with you. In our next video, we will be adding the signatures, putting everything together for the inside of our book. And I will be showing you how to do a five hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you have fun going through all of the different elements in this kit. They were a lot of fun to put together. I also look forward to seeing your pictures along the way, so feel free to share with me on Facebook. The link to my Facebook will be down below. And we will see you in the next video where we add our pages. Strings everywhere. <laughs> Bye, guys.